with local businesses, if you partner with a local business right now, even though you're going to be building things for them uh, and with them, like they're getting sales and traffic right now. So upon agreement, you're a partner. That means you start making money from day one with this. If you're trying to be a growth operator, this is definitely one you're going to want to check out. We have one where we implement 10 different monetization methods into our partners. You're not getting clients, you're getting partners. This video right here is going to demonstrate a, a young man getting around 104, 104K per month, supposedly. I'm going to break down, uh, you know, the things that you need and the things you don't need. The right one. Okay, real quick, before I get into the video, I just want to show you some proof so I don't have anyone in the comments that's like, oh, you're no, no, you're a scammer. You didn't actually make that much money. Eh. Um, here's some big bank statements real quick. Let me hide my account numbers so nobody, so none of you guys can scam me because that would be ironic, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, here, you can see that statement there. Money in, what is that? 104000 a month. Let's see this one. Oh, shit, I'm going to have to blur my account number and all this other, <laughs> but 102. So basically, he's just showing you, uh, you know, proof that he's, making money. Is it from growth operating is really no way to know from a bank because that can be from a trust fund that can be from him selling shoes. It can be from Amazon payouts. It doesn't, you know, but he's actually doing what he's doing. I checked him out for a minute now. What we're going to teach you guys to do, what is completely different from this form of growth operating first, let me tell you what he does. Okay. So they find a creator on social media, you know, somebody they got a, a decent following. You can reach out to them, but they don't have a way to fully monetize their audience or something like that. Right. Uh, and what you do is you create a course for them and you create a community for them. You handle the front end pause and the back end stuff for them. And then you share a percentage of the profits that come from it. Sometimes you charge them up front. Sometimes you charge them some type of flat rate monthly. And sometimes you just do it based off the percentages of what the launch does and how much you're going to make. Now, that's their way of doing it. What I'm going to show you guys later, which is why you want to stick around, is how we do it by implementing the 10 monetization methods into local businesses. OK, so it really doesn't matter if they have a huge following or whatever, if you growth operate the way that we show you how to do it, you're going to be able to plug into local businesses as if you're investing in them, as if you bought into their company, you'll be able to make money from them 10 different ways. And you're creating multiple new income streams for them as well, whether or not they have a following. So that's a reason to stay, but let's continue. Well, oh, um, let's see another one. That's one or two. That might be the same statement. Oops. God damn it. This is going to be a pain in the ass to blur, but 99 in there. Um, obviously the, the withdrawals, the part of that's like investments and not just blowing all payment. this money operating. I've worked with people like Cardinal Mason and Sebastian Georgiou, Sebastian Esqueda, Kevin Pacman, Ecom Side Hustles, Flips for Miles, KT Hustles, Benjamin Seda, all of these people that are selling information online and basically. So that's one thing that I like. He's, uh, you know, he's giving you, uh, his his appeal of authority. He's letting you know he's not a rook. He's naming people that he's worked with that you might've heard of so they can build a trust factor with you guys, okay? Uh, so they can have credibility just in case you don't really like know him. Maybe this is your first time to his channel or something like that, but now you'll be able to like believe him if he named those people and you can go check, fact check with those people and all of that you'll come back and know that you can actually listen to this guy right here. For example, if you go on my channel, you'll see that Coach Keith has made over 140K in less than 90 days with our copy and paste rental model. And most people that go into the copy and paste rental program make thousands of dollars their first month. Now, this is a different program. This is agency to partner that we're talking about right now, which you can find in the first pinned comment, where we promise you up to 200K per month when you have one partner that you're partnered with. And this is because they're a local business. It's gonna be a lot of foot traffic and online traffic when you plug in the 10 monetization methods but let's go basically the idea of a that you're a growth operator means you take somebody like that who has a big audience of people online who want to buy something from them who are interested in their products who trust them they know like and trust them and you partner up with them and you help them sell something to their audience and then you get a piece of it that's basically what i've done but I want to consider myself a growth operator in the way that it's been popularized and positioned. And I also want to talk about how first, how I got here and second, why I think becoming a growth operator as a complete beginner is probably one of the worst business models that you can try and that you. Okay. So that's where I beg to differ with him. Okay. So he just expressed and explained why, uh, you know, how he does growth marketing or growth operating. So basically he finds a creator. And he reaches out to them and he says what he can do. He says, I'm going to build all this front end, back end stuff for you, uh, for your course and your community and all of that extra stuff. Right. Um, and the thing about it is, is pure leverage. This is why I'm so attracted to it. We, like I said, we do it in a more powerful way because we're dealing with local businesses, not just online creators that don't have money. So it allows us to throw a lot of fuel on the fire because local businesses have marketing budgets 
more often than a freaking like Instagram model or something like that. But the good thing about it is it's pure leverage, guys. You understand what I'm saying? What you're going to be doing is you don't have to build an audience from scratch, trust and authority from scratch to sell a product or service. You're literally partnering with someone that's already spent years doing all of that extra stuff, right? So once you create the product, the community or the service or whatever you're going to be creating per their expertise, once you launch, you choose a launch date, guys, like the money is pretty much instantaneous. So for him to say that this is not a good business model for a beginner, I can't agree with that because you don't have to build an audience yourself. You don't have to really know how to do anything other than post content. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be instructing that creator that you're partnering with on the type of content that you want them to create for a certain amount of time up into the launch date. You should get the Jeff Lerner uh, launch book, right? It'll teach you how to like, you know, put together launch launch sequences and everything like that. Uh, so you can have successful launches. But if you're a beginner, guys, like... <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you've made a post on Instagram before. So all you have to do is now get them to strategically start posting. Hey, guys, on, on July 15th, we're going to be launching our new community, right? You know what I'm saying? It's going to be free for the first month or free for the first week or free for the first three days if you want to do that or something like that. It's going to include an ebook for everybody that get in there. And the audio book is going to be free on top of that. It's going to include, uh, you know, a step-by-step 15 day, uh, 15 video training based off of what these people are following them for, whatever it is, right? So that's basically what you're going to be doing. And when people go and join that community, guys, the money comes in right then and there. So tell me how that's not good for a beginner when like all the other, most of the other business models, you will have to be required to gain some type of skill that you're not accustomed to. Everybody watching this is accustomed to either uh, posting on TikTok or Instagram right now, Right. Everybody on here is accustomed to trying to come up with some type of content ideas, right? So all you're doing is taking that same skill and applying that to someone that already has an audience. Your job is simply to build their, their community, figure out what you're going to put in a community, and ChatGPT can help you with that. Uh, <laughs> you know, figure out what their course should be about, but you don't even have to figure that out because their course should be about whatever their expertise is, which is why the people are following them in the first place. So why is that not beginner friendly, <laughs> right? So I have copy and paste rentals and people are making money their first days with that program. But as far as long-term and for you to be able to make millions of dollars in a short period of time, the way we teach it is our students go after local businesses, partner with them. We add new income streams to them. We plug into their current income streams that they currently have based off of our skills that we bring to the table without investment. And we're able to pretty much become like part owner of the business, you know, off paper, unless they trust you or something like that. And you're able to start making money instantaneously with this because they're getting foot traffic from day one. That's the difference. A lot of these guys with growth uh, operating, they have to wait for a launch to start making money. With local businesses, if you partner with a local business right now, even though you're going to be building things for them uh, and with them, like they're getting sales and traffic right now. So upon agreement, you're a partner. That means you start making money from day one with this. All right. So for a beginner, why wouldn't this be the perfect business model for you? Let's go. You can start when you have zero experience. If you do have some experience and you've had a client and you're working in some kind of service-based business, it can be a really good model. But if you're a complete beginner, becoming a growth operator is really dumb. And these are just my, my two cents. I'm not trying to take a shot at anybody. I'm just talking about the way that I see the market and the way it looks, you know, being on the inside of a lot of these big info product businesses with the people that are, that are creators that are like the best creators that you could work with as a growth operator. I've worked with those guys and I'll tell you firsthand, they're not going to work with a complete beginner. So first, if you don't know me, my name is Ben Bader. All right. So what he's doing is he's talking about supply and demand right here, guys. He's saying if you're a beginner and you don't have uh, your own brand or your own following and your own credibility is going to be very difficult to get one of these major creators to want to partner with you. Now, I agree with them on that. But like I said before, that doesn't mean this isn't good for beginners. Let me tell you why. Just because the big creators don't want to work with a beginner don't mean you can't partner with another creator that's not as large as those people, right? Who the heck want to be sitting there and... <laughs> Who the heck want to be sitting there and trying to reach out to people that's not going to uh, respond to them in the first place? So what you do is you create a snowball effect, guys. Everybody watching this right now, you want to write this stuff down. Create a snowball effect. So what that means is you start working with uh, uh, small to medium creators, creators that still answer the comments in their DMs without some type of AI software, right? <laughs> when you reach out to them. So even if they got 10 to 15,000 followers or something and they still answer their DMs or their comments, guys, 
just check the engagement, the size of the accounts, the size of the creators matters not. I've seen some large accounts with, with, with tiny amounts of engagement, right? For example, look at my channel right now. I got 31,000 something freaking subscribers, right? And this tiny channel that this dude is on gets more engagement than I do. So like, just because their followers is high or something like that doesn't mean they're out of reach for you, right? But if they are out of reach, get with a smaller creator because smaller creators are, they have more intimate relationships with their community still, right? So even if they only get 100 to 200 people to uh, um, comment, uh, like, or engage with their content, guys, like if you got, you know, 100 to 200 people paying uh, $100 a month for the community, I mean, that's still money. So, and that's still a good case study to be able to take and then now you will be able to, when you do inbox these bigger creators, you're approaching with show and instead of tell, right? Like show and prove instead of telling what you can do, right? So that's how you get their attention when they can see what you have done. But guess what? The creators that's around the same size as your profiles and all of that, you can build on top of them, build all your case studies with them, and you're still going to be making money along the way. And then you go after the big guys, but you can avoid all of this by partnering with local businesses. Local businesses aren't worried about their following or how many followers they, how many followers you got, you know, unless you're trying to do SMMA with them or something like that. But other than that, like if you can bring in sales for these local businesses and traffic online and offline, which is what we teach you guys, then they don't really care about like, oh, you haven't worked with this creator or that creator before. Like nobody cares about that. And like I said before, once you plug in the 10 monetization methods, with one partner, it's going to be very difficult not to hit 200K. It's just going to be very difficult not to hit that. Okay. So let's keep going. I've been in the marketing agency space for the past three years almost. I started a local lead gen SMA about three years ago where I was working with basketball trainers, running their Facebook ads and setting up go high level for them. And that's how I kind of got my feet wet in the agency world and working with clients. And then after a while doing that, I started working with some of the bigger personal brands in basketball training. So these were guys that had hundreds of thousands of followers and I started doing everything for them. So I was writing all their copy, all their emails, mm -hmm. I was running their ads, I was building their funnels. And that's when I originally became a growth operator. I was working with like four or five of the biggest names in basketball and they were paying me a few thousand dollars a month to do all this stuff for him all in i was making probably 15 20 grand a month and this was about two years ago but i was doing exactly what's kind of described as this growth operator business model i would go to somebody that has a big audience and say hey i can help you make more money from this audience i'd partner up with them run all of the operations run all of the marketing so all they had to do was post more content we'd sell more of their program and then we'd all make more money and that was that and then after i have just worked with the bigger basketball trainer personal brands for a while I learned a lot. I became a really good copywriter. I knew how to build That's funnels. I knew how to run ads. I just knew a lot about how info product businesses and coaching businesses worked in general. So I was like, okay, I can apply this in any industry. So the most common industry that you see people selling information in is usually how to make money online. It's the here in my garage type ads. It's the, oh, here's how I made $100,000 on Airbnb. It's the drop shippers. It's the guys that are teaching high ticket sales and copywriting and Amazon FBA and TikTok shop. It's that type of person who is the majority of the creators that you're gonna be partnering up with as a growth operator. So I started working with a lot of those guys and I was doing the same kind of thing for them. I was writing all of their copy. I was scripting their VSLs, building their funnels, helping manage all of the systems and their sales team and everything that goes in to an info product business, to a coaching business, because it's definitely not as simple as just like, oh set up a school group and forget about it that's just not how it fucking works now he's telling the truth on that but it is not as tedious as he's making it seem if you do it the way that we teach you of course you're going to be handling uh, uh i mean you can outsource all that stuff you just said you you can outsource that guys you know so sometimes like i get irritated when people make stuff seem more uh, uh simple than it actually is and then other times i get a little upset or annoyed when people make things seem more complex than they are so what they'll do is they'll make it not accusing him of that. I'm not saying he's doing that. Uh, but what a lot of people do is they'll make it seem more complex so that you will feel fear. You'll feel that you won't be able to do it on your own. It seems like it's so many parts that go into this and all of that. But to tell you the truth, you can pay somebody to create a community. You can pay somebody to create content. You can pay somebody to uh, create videos, uh, set up websites and do all of that extra stuff out of the money that the partners are giving you guys if you're doing this and that's another thing he said info product growth creator a lot of you guys are looking at these dudes on here and you're trying to be info product growth creators there's nothing wrong with that but guys that doesn't allow you uh, uh maximum benefits okay like if you plug into a local business 
I mean, of course you can create communities for them. You can create their online presence and do all of that extra stuff, but you start making money from day one. For example, can, you know, for example, uh, what we'll do immediately <laughs> is we'll plug into their payments. How do we do that? We switch out their payment processors. So what does that mean? Okay, well, if we have a referral program with their, their uh, POS system provider and their, their payment uh, processing and car reader and companies and all of that extra stuff, we get a commission every single, we get a commission when they switch over to the payment processing company and we get a commission when every anytime someone swipes the credit card in person using a POS system or if someone makes a purchase online, we get 50% of the uh, the transaction fee. So just with that one monetization method plugged in, and we got nine others, just with that, you start from day one. Well, as soon as the payment processors and all of that stuff is switched over, so probably like day four or something like that. But you guys get what I mean. Even without you setting up their info products, even without you setting up like pretty much anything, you're plugging into the existing traffic and sales that they're already getting. You take that money and then you can literally throw that at some type of VA or, or someone from Fiverr and have them build a community. Use ChatGPT to like plug what's going to be some good, valuable stuff to do in a community for months ahead and all of that on a weekly basis. Right. Like, come on. It's, it's not rocket science. I'm sorry. It's not it's not rocket science. It's simple. Some things are sim it's simple, but some things are not easy. So I'm with him on that. If you don't have excuse, I mean, if you don't have experience booting a computer, <laughs> booting up a computer, if you don't have experience like creating a profile on Facebook, if you don't have experience posting a, 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 a something on Instagram or something like that, then this is going to be difficult for you. But if you have experience doing all of those things I just named, trust me, you'll figure it out if you want some freaking money. We're all adults here. Well, most of us are adults here, right? And even if you're a teen, I mean, you probably know how to use social media far better than your parents do. So for a beginner, the growth operating niche is definitely one that I would recommend. And like I said, I've been doing this since 2015. You can go back and check. I ain't just been doing this two years or three years. I've been doing this game since 2015, okay? So I know it's, it's easy for beginners. I know it's easy for intermediate and intermediate. And I know it's easy for advanced people to be able to scale using this growth operating uh, you know, niche. But the difference is, like I said, we deal with local businesses. We're not just going to go and tag on to some fitness influencers, some, some uh, uh, like you said, some make money online guy or something like that. Now, those are getting saturated because all of y'all are watching his videos and his friends' videos, and they keep telling you to go after the same people, right? But you'll notice he didn't tell you to go after like local service providers. Why? Because his business model, the way they do growth operating, it really is based off of the size of the audience of the, uh, the creator, right? But if you go after a local service business, I mean, you can plug into their offline, start making money from that first, then create new income streams for them online, grow their audience if they need it grown. But some of the local service businesses, they have a decent following as well. You understand what I'm saying? And you can create the same course, the same, you know, community that you would do with one of these online creators. You can do that for a local service business as well. And the difference is you got to take part in what they're making offline too. That's why it's, it's, it's so awesome. You understand? Agency to partner in the first pin comment. Let's go. And if you do find success like that for a little bit, it's going to be short lived because that's just not a good product. A bunch of little idiots running around in a school group. That's like daycare. Like people don't want to fucking deal with that type of shit. And it's just not a solid model. If you're going to really scale a coaching business, you need a lot of course content. You need different coaches in there. You need different offers and one-on-one and -on -one coaching. There's all of these moving pieces that a school group can't fix. So like the general model is, oh, partner up with somebody that has a big audience, help them set up a school group and take 50%. That's just not very realistic. It's just not that simple. And anybody that has a big audience that has people that actually want to buy from them, they'll be worth working with as a growth operator. They're not going to go with a complete beginner and they're not, and they're going to be able to see through the, oh, we'll set up your community and all you have to do is make content. It's just not that simple. They understand how valuable their audience is. And they're going to come and work with somebody like me or someone else who's more experienced in the space because they actually want to do it right. They don't want to give 50% of their income to some little ass kid who attended a webinar and was like, I'm going to be a growth operator. I <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. See, see, he really going off, ain't he? Yo, hey, I agree with some of that. You understand? Like if they are a very legitimate established creator and everybody knows them and you're just some like beginner out of freaking nowhere that is trying to like reach out to them and handle their entire audience and their name brand, they might be afraid of all of that stuff if you don't have a name of your own. But 
let me give you guys some actual value instead of just complaining and ranting about this. He was right about all that, just putting people in a school community. Communities aren't as easy to uh, maintain as people make them seem. It's simple, but it's not easy. You got to keep people satisfied in order to make them continue to pay monthly and all of that extra stuff. But let me show you how you solve the problem of uh, the creator um, not wanting to work with you are not answering your DMs. This is a method that I used in order to get clients to come to me. See, a lot of you guys are uh, just sitting and DMing. Outreach is okay for partnerships, okay? But it's way better if you get a person to come to you, okay? Now, if you can be clever in your way of doing this, then it won't matter the size that you are. So now, when you reach out, what are you gonna do? You're going to present your proposal to these creators, typically, right? Well, that's if they want to accept your DM. Chances are they're not going to see it. What you want to do is you want to create word of mouth. You want to create a word of mouth effect, okay? Word of mouth marketing is the best form of advertising, period. So how can you do this on social media? Easy. Social media makes it easy for you to create a word of mouth effect by giving you the ability to tag people in. You can tag profiles in and all of that stuff. So a lot of you guys are just trying to grow your following, but you're not being strategic about it. It doesn't matter if you have 200 followers or something like that. If they're a very strengthened community and they're like cult-like and they really believe what you do, then it's going to be powerful no matter what. So what do I mean by this? All right. So let's say that creator, let's say you're doing it their way right? Because they're not going to answer your DMs. If you're not verified, they're not, probably not going to answer, agree to what you're talking about because they don't trust that you know what you're doing. So what you want to do is you want to create uh, um, a piece of content displaying your proof of what you know how to do, as much proof as you can get. Even if you don't, if you haven't had any, um, you know, experience with this, guys, like, don't listen to people. No, I'm not trying to talk about them. Okay, this is what you do. There are famous and popular case studies of this stuff online. All you need to do is bring clarity to the person that you're talking to about what your offer is. Money is instant the moment clarity meets the offer. Okay, so once it's like, oh, yeah, I, of course, I get that then you can get money. So what do I mean? Okay, so you want to implement the breakdown in this piece of content. You want to implement the case study in this piece of content. Of course, you want to call the action in this piece of content. Okay, so th that's my perfect infomercial formula. You have your testimonials. You have your, uh, uh, your, your scientific breakdown. You have your call to action and it repeats. Okay, so you have uh, like maybe a, uh, you know, two to five minute video on whatever platform will allow you to do that, right? and you tag in their friends. You make sure you're naming it after that creator that you want to actually work with, and you tag their friends. That's what you do. You don't even have to tag them. You tag their friends. Their friends are going to reach out to them like, yo, did you see that video that dude uh, made about you? Or that this girl made about you? Okay, as long as that video is good, and it works, and you want that video to be so good that their friends will make fun of them if they don't work with you. That's how you do it. So you're spending hours on your outreach. Instead, spend hours making a video so good that once you tag in their friends, they're going to go tell them about it. Tag in their competitors too. They're direct competitors. Someone's going to tell them. They're going to DM them for you. You're not going to be in that little secret inbox that, that they never get the message in. Their friends are going to tell them, yo, you need to uh, call up this, this Yasriel David dude. Like he just made this video, like exposing everything about your company, all the flaws, all of that. You want to be bold with it. Like, you know, you don't want to disrespect them, but yo, <laughs> like they're not monetizing their audience properly. So you you have to expose that and put it publicly. If you tell them in secret in their DMs, they can ignore it because they think nobody can see their flaws like everybody else. People don't really change until their flaws are embarrassing them publicly. So that's how I used to get a lot of businesses to deal with me. <laughs> I'll post their freaking bad reviews publicly and tag them in it. You understand what I'm saying? You hear me? Like, I know that might seem mean to a lot of you guys, but the truth is people don't really like taking action unless it's an emergency or unless they have fear or something like that, or unless they're embarrassed so bad that they have to fix the problem. If I was trying, if you were in school, in public school, and the teacher kept you so long and didn't allow you to go to the bathroom that you peed your pants and you were just stuck in the bathroom, uh, you couldn't call your parents to tell you to come up to, uh, you know, to come up to school to bring you some more pants. And I walked in the bathroom and I had some pants for sale. And all you had was your lunch money. How you gonna get out that bathroom without everybody seeing that you peed your freaking pants? You literally had to give me your lunch money for these pants right here. Do you see? So when you put their flaws publicly, tag them or tag their people in it, they are gonna have to respond to you. It's not always gonna be a good response. 
And I'm not saying be disrespectful. You can respectfully talk about their flaws. Like, yo, you know, and do it in a, in a format as if you're just making your own case study, as if you're just demonstrating how you can take someone from flawed to perfection in their business. Boom. There you go. They're going to do that five to 10 times a day. You're going to get people reaching out to you to have them uh, uh, to have you fix their problems. People that don't know you, people that got bigger followings than you. A lot of them are going to admire how bold you are. They're going to admire that you're not just blowing up their inbox like everybody else. You're going to stand out. Like, come on, man. Come on. So that's just a way around all that DMing bigger creators and, and them not wanting to talk to you. They're going to talk to you whether they say, hey, man, damn, why you putting, <laughs> why are you putting the spotlight on me like that? Or like, yo, I like the video you made and it showed that you know how to like fix these problems and stuff. When can we, you know, get this started? Ta-da. Right. So, I mean, guys and gals, you can do this. First pin comment, agency to partner. You can get to 200K per month by plugging into the already uh, monetized systems that local businesses have offline and online, and then adding a couple more uh, <laughs> a couple more income streams to them. How we teach you to is like pretty is pretty fun, first of all, and is is simple as well. Okay, so let's keep going. Again, I'm not taking shots on anybody, but that's just the reality of it. So like I said earlier, I work with a lot of the biggest names in the space. And now I'm in a position where I'll usually charge them anywhere from 10 to 15K and get 10 to 20% of their of the revenue that we generate for them. Even now, as like the one of the go-to guys in this space, I'm not getting anywhere close to 50%. That's just a crazy fucking number that doesn't happen. But generally, we'll work with anywhere. From All right, so that's something that I want to address right there. He's right, like getting 50%, even though you're going to be the one handling the front end, the back end and stuff like that, getting 50% without a name, without a reputation and all of that is going to be difficult, guys. But you don't need 50% of everything, right? You don't need 50% of everything. And then you heard what he just said. You're asking, he's telling you to ask, or he's saying that he's asked, let me reword that. He's saying that he asks for 10 to 15 grand up front plus 20%. Now that's like another reason why it would be difficult for you as a beginner. If you're requesting that much up front and you don't have no, tr no uh, <laughs> track record, then of course, yeah, of course. So if you're a newbie, like, guess what? your wait time for money is not that long, guys. So you don't always have to charge people a lot of money up front or any money up front. If they're a huge creator that you're reaching out to and you're almost this close to getting them to agree, just take the damn, the split. Don't even ask for anything up front because guess what? You create a one to two week launch sequence and they're posting multiple times per day based off of your instruction. You only got one to two weeks. If, the, if you properly scope them out and see that their audience actually engages with them and everything and they partake in things and you've been doing the launch sequence properly, they're going to sell on launch day. So why the hell do you need to charge 10 to 20, uh, 20 you know, whatever that is up front when you're going, you're pretty much guaranteed if you did your research right to make a boatload of money. Right. And if you have multiple programs that you created for this creator, right, that you partner with. See, so what he was talking about was upfront money plus a percentage of everything. OK, so let's say that um, you created upsells for this creator. OK. All right. The initial thing that they sign up to would typically be the course or the community. OK, so the course, um, you know, you know, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks or something like that. Then the community is ninety seven dollars per month. OK, well, guess what? All right, why don't you get 50% of the initial course sign up and then get 15% or 20% of what they're going to get recurring from the community. And then when they upsell someone to a coaching call for two, $3,000, you get, you know, 30% of that, right? Like it's going to be, more, if you're doing this properly, there's a lot of things that you're going to build for them that you can get a percentage of. But if you tell them I want 50% of everything, then it sounds like a, a crazy, you know, record label deal or something like that. So they're like, mm, I don't know. So you just have to structure the deal properly, guys. I strongly suggest you like learn about like strategic deal structure. You can Google or YouTube, a lot of that stuff to where you can make it like enticing for them, make it feel like they're getting their worth, right? Um, but dude, like I said, you don't even have to charge them up front. If you're doing it with local businesses, like we teach you guys, that's the difference between us and a lot of these growth operator dudes on, on, on here. We didn't even call it growth operating. This is a new name, right? <laughs> right. But uh, if you growth operate how we teach you to do it, you're partnering with local businesses instead. These local businesses have foot traffic that comes in on a daily basis, whether it's a restaurant, a gym, it doesn't freaking matter. So if you're plugging in the 10 monetization methods, then that means you start making money from day one uh, with some of the, the business strategies. I'll give you another one. Okay. All right. So when you partner with them, you're going to have access to their email and their SMS list. 
that these local businesses already have. If they're dentists, they've been collecting people's emails and numbers for years since these kids, these people were kids all the way to adulthood. So they got thousands of people on their list already. And when you partner with them, you have instant access to that. So guess what? You'll be able to uh, send out reactivation campaigns to get a percentage of that. You can do that from day one. Day one. On top of that, with their permission, you'll be able to send out follow up emails with CPA offers and affiliate offers for like, te you know, home teeth whitening kits and electric toothbrushes and all different types of stuff, you know, veneer fitting little mold cast things and stuff like dog, like <laughs> It's 10 different monetization methods you can apply. It's not just about creating them a course in the community. If you're doing it the way these people are talking about it and you're just leaving it there, then yeah, you might have a lot of difficulty. But how we teach you, you don't even, they don't even have to have a big following, guys. Completely different. All right. From five to 10 clients at a time, all of which are paying us around 10 to even 40K a month on those rev shares. So when we have a client that makes 400, 500K a month through our efforts, you know, then they usually end up paying us 40, 50K a month just from one client. But again, this is me having multiple years in the industry and having my own personal brand and being well connected. Like, you know, this didn't happen overnight. It's not like I woke up and I just knew a bunch about the coaching businesses and the info product industry to where I was getting those top tier clients. And most of the time, you'll have to work your way up to the point. Now, keep in mind, guys, he keeps using the word client. And this is where uh, the barriers to entry come. If you're doing it the way that he's telling you to do it, guys, I'm not saying that he's telling you to do it wrong. He's just telling you to do it different. OK, so, so what do I mean by that? All right. If you're getting clients like all of these, all of these different business models I'm seeing are just just agencies, regular, typical marketing agencies masquerading as some new type of business model. It's not a new type of business model. I hate when they just slap some new name on it, growth operating. They did it with drop servicing. It used to be service out arbitrage, right? Like dog, it's still just the marketing agency how he's telling you to do it. When they use the verbiage client, you already know it's a problem now. So yes, it's gonna be very difficult to get five people to pay you 10, $20,000 upfront plus 20% of everything if you are a brand new person with no brand and no name. But if you're going after people and you're approaching, the, the, the Bible says, uh, well, I'll say this, the greatest servant is the greatest salesperson, okay? The greatest servant is the greatest salesperson. So when you can demonstrate, if you can serve and show that you are the real freaking deal, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not. You either know how to sing or you don't. Now, you might need a little coaching to tune up some of your notes, but there's usually raw talent there, Right? You either know how to scrap or you don't. Usually the people that get into MMA and all of these different professions, like they were having good street fights at the beginning. Bruce Lee, like a lot of these people, they were already like lethal before they got real professional with it. So my point is when you do your demonstration, like I just showed you guys and told you guys, then you really don't have, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not, as long as you aren't perceived as a beginner. Perception is everything. A lot of people just, they just have the gift. And you just have to accept the fact that they have the gift. A lot of people will say, oh, man, I've been doing this for this, this, this years, this years. Well, it's going to be very embarrassing when a newbie comes in and takes your place. Some people just got it naturally. OK, so what I want you guys to do uh, is not listen to anyone telling you that this is not good for a beginner. What I will say and agree with them is simple is not the same thing as easy. There's very simple business models, but the steps might not be easy to implement. OK. Right now, what I will say is if you can plug in social medias and all of that stuff, then growth partnering, you know, building a growth model, uh, uh, a, a growth. Um, my bad, y'all. I'm trying, I'm hearing stuff in the background and all of that. Right. Um, if you become a growth partner and stuff, I mean, a lot of this stuff is already like things that you're doing already, but it might just be stuff that the business owner that you're partnering with don't have time to do. OK, so here is agency to partner over here. Add an extra 200 K to your agency without without adding new clients, plus enjoy equity benefits without investing in them. So we got two withouts on here. All right. You can do this without adding new clients. Like if you already have one and you can do, do get equity benefits without investing into these businesses. So like I said, we're different. I'm not saying that they aren't good. What I'm saying is we're just different. We go after local business partners, okay? We don't have to require them to give us all this money up front. They can if they want to. We're not going to stop them, right? It can add a little fuel to the fire. But we plug into the monitor. We plug into what's already working with them and bringing in money. 
Since we become partners with them, we're instantly entitled to whatever percentage it is that we agreed upon. Then we take our cut and we throw a little bit more fuel on it. And then we add new income streams. And if they grow into another location, we get a piece of that. If they grow into 10 locations around the city, we get a piece of that. If they go national, we get a piece of that. Guys, this is something different. You understand? So I strongly suggest you come over here. It's in the first pinned comment. Check out the little... Um, presentation situation right here. Like it says, it gives you step-by-step -step training on how to find and monetize uh, partners, 10 different monetization methods, list of all our outreach and automation and sales tracking tools, uh, instant access to our new private community where we go live and we help members scale. Plus we got bonuses of how you can offer your clients a 17K in-house bank. So we build it, right? We build the bank and you get a percentage in the thousands, <laughs> okay? How to build a 15K affiliate army of them. I think your commission on that will be like 5K. So they'll have their own army of affiliates that we build and we train and everything like that. Plus you get instant access to all the rest of our anti-job university financial courses, guys. So if you don't begin enjoying faster results with less effort within a week of plugging in our full monetization system will cut you a percentage of one of our profitable partnerships. You keep community access, plus you keep the bonuses. Come on, check this out. And like I said, you can check all our testimonials and all of that extra stuff, but this is what I want you to do when you're done. Stop watching testimonials and become one. Stop strolling YouTube. It's not going to get you rich, even though it gives you false dopamine hits just watching financial videos. When you go check your bank account, there's still nothing in there, okay? So we do this. You can do this as a beginner. You just have to take action. There is no cash in without action. Love you guys. Make a move.